This video describes the features and functionality of the Exam Manager application built on ServiceNow. I'll walk through the administrative process of setting up and configuring the application and also demonstrate the user experience of taking an exam. The Exam Manager application allows users or students an intuitive interface for taking an exam while providing exam administrators the ability to quickly create, manage, and administer exams containing multiple choice style questions. Users can quickly see what exams they need to take and have taken, stop and start an exam at any time easily review and update their responses before they submit the exam and instantly see whether they passed or failed. The exam manager also offers many other useful administrative features such as an easy retake feature, optionally randomized questions for each user, question and answer validation, update and recalculate, analysis of trouble questions, custom notifications on each exam, determine when to show scores and correct and incorrect answers on each exam, images on questions, and the ability to manage groups of users on exams. Just a note about software releases, Exam Manager version 2 requires the Dublin release or higher of ServiceNow. To find the Exam Manager application, I'll log into the Share Portal and search for Exam Manager. Click on the Exam Manager link and then click Download. Once that is done, I'll go to the System Update Sets application menu and click Retrieved Update Sets. From the list, I click the link Import Update Set from XML and choose the Update Set file. Finally, I preview the Update Set and commit it. Before I can set up an exam, I'll need to grant a user the Exam Admin role. This role is installed with the Exam Manager Update Set. I'll assign it to user Chuck Tomasi. The update set also includes an exam user role, which is required for users to see the exam application. I'm now logged in as Chuck Tomasi with the exam admin role and going to begin creating an exam by navigating to the exam application menu and clicking the exams module. Next, I click new to create a new exam. This contains the details about the exam. Now I'll make an exam about basic weather questions. I'll call my exam Weather 100 and provide a helpful short description. This field can be used to identify an administrator for each exam. With the options under the Pass and Fail sections below, this is who gets notified with a status email as each user completes an exam. Under the Q&A section, I will click Randomize Questions and Randomize Answers to mix up the questions from one student to the next so that one doesn't say, Number 4 is C. If you have certain questions that must remain in a fixed order, you can override this setting at the question level, which I'll demonstrate in a little bit. Max Questions limits the number of questions presented to the user. Combined with Randomize, it affords the ability to have a collection of eight questions, for example, and only use five on a specific exam. All exams are either pass or failed. There is no grading mechanism in place. The min score field indicates the minimum score required to pass the exam. Under the results section, I have a few options to help me control what the user sees after completing an exam. Here I see two checkbox fields, Show Score, which determines if the user should be made aware of their final score, and Allow Review on Completion, which lets them click through to see the details of their exam. I'll check both to demonstrate what happens. When both are checked, I get a third field, Show Answers on Fail, which allows me to choose when to display the correct and incorrect answers. For example, if I have a lot of true and false questions, I may not want to show which ones were right or wrong because the student can just identify the wrong answers and switch them without doing any further studying. For now, I'll set it to only after pass. Here, I'll indicate that I want to notify each user when his or her exam is ready, send a custom message to the user when they pass or fail, and also notify the administrator of the completion status. Once I fill in all the fields, I'll save the record and get three related lists, questions, groups, and users. I'll start by creating some questions by clicking on New under the Questions list. I'm going to ignore the Number field for now and let the system fill it in when I'm done creating questions. 
The order field is auto-populated, so I'll leave that alone as well. Here, I'll add the question text and an image that the text can reference. At this point, I save the question and start creating possible answers for the question. A quick inspection shows that I only have one correct answer. If I chose to randomize the answers on the exam, and this particular question has an answer all of the above or none of the above that must appear at the end of the list, I can override that option here and force the answer order. I can optionally group questions together by categories specific to this exam for later reporting and analysis. Categories are defined using the Question Categories module found here. Some suggestions for good question and answers include asking questions that take the form, which one of the following? Use questions with blank such as clear fair weather is usually associated with blank pressure. Avoid negative questions such as which one of the following is not? Avoid open-ended questions such as explain the Coriolis effect. Create only one clearly correct answer. Create a distractor answer, something close that is plausible but arguably incorrect. Create one or two throwaway questions. Now that I have a few questions and answers created, I'll click this link to generate numbers. These are used simply as identification to each question. The order field indicates the sequence it will appear in the exam, except in the case when randomized questions is used. This link checks that all questions have one and only one correct answer and that there are no duplicate question numbers or order. I see that I have one question that does not have a correct answer, so I'll click on the link and make a quick update. Validating again shows everything is fine. Now that I have questions and answers created, it's time to set up AbleTutor to take this exam. I do this by clicking the Users Related list and then click the Edit button. In the list collector, I locate and move Able from the left side to the right and click Save. The system automatically creates a set of questions for Able based on the way I configured the exam. When I click here, I can see Able's progress and answers. I see that the state is currently pending, which means that the system has created his exam, but he won't get notified and cannot start until it is ready. I'll trigger the process by changing the state to ready and saving the record. Now let's look at what Abel sees when he takes an exam. First, Abel receives an email letting him know that his weather exam is ready to take. Here's the custom message from our exam record and the system provides a link directly to the exam. Abel can either click on the link provided or go to the exam application menu, click take exam, and then click on the exam name. After answering each question, clicking next advances to the next unanswered question. The Home button returns to the list of exams at any time, and the Review button brings up a list of all questions and answers provided so far. If Abel doesn't like the answer to this one, he clicks on the number and can update it. When all questions are answered, the list is displayed one more time for review. And finally, Abel submits his exam to immediately find out he passed. An email is sent to Abel with any special instructions, and because I selected Show Score on the exam, he also gets his score included in the email. And because I checked the box to notify the administrator, Chuck also gets an email regarding Abel's success. Later, when Abel goes to Exam Take Exam, he can see his score in this column because the exam is configured to show scores, and when he clicks the exam name, he is given his list of answers. Finally, I set this exam to show correct answers only if the user passes, so he sees this column, otherwise it would be hidden. Now let's look at what happens if a user does not pass an exam. The scores list indicates that Beth has previously failed this exam. Beth has contacted me and let me know that she made a mistake and meant to answer question number two with warm front. So I'll go into her record, locate the question, change the answer, and recalculate her score using this link. I can see that the score is recalculated, but unfortunately, it was not enough to improve her score to pass. Beth indicated that she would like another attempt at the weather exam, so I'll click Retake to easily regenerate another set of questions and set the state to Ready. Notice that the attempt number is incremented to let me know how many times Beth has tried this exam. 
The next time Beth clicks on Take Exam, she will see the failed exam, which does not show correct answers because she has not yet passed, and see her second attempt is ready to start. Here's a quick overview of the table structure that makes up the Exam Manager application. The exam information is held in the exam table. A series of question records are related to the exam. A series of answers are related to each question. When the administrator adds a user's to the user's related list or clicks retake, a new score record is created. This contains relationships to indicate which user is taking which exam and the results of that exam. The creation of a score record also triggers a business rule to create a series of response records that indicate which questions will be presented to the user and which answers they chose as their response. Version 2 of the Exam Manager also adds three more tables to facilitate managing groups and associating users and exams with those groups. Here I am as the Exam Admin again. Rather than add people to an exam one at a time, I may want to create a group of people to administer exams all at once. For example, I may need to recertify the same group of people once a year on the company's internet usage policy. I can do this by going to Groups and creating a new group. These are administered by the exam admin and not related to the system groups found under User Administration and used in other parts of ServiceNow. I give the group a name, specify an instructor if I like, and save the record. Now I can populate the members of the group with a few names and click Save. Once that is complete, I use the exams list to select which exam to administer to this group. I click Edit, choose one or more exams, and click Save. The system does what it did before by creating an instance of an exam for each user with the response records for each question. Notice here that the exam is in the pending state and that all user instances are also in the pending state. Pending exams do not show up when users see their list of exams. This gives me the opportunity to queue up several exams for the group in advance and launch them at the appropriate time, saving me a lot of time. When I'm ready to trigger the exams for the users, I right-click on the state in the list and choose Start Exam. This changes all the score records for the group members of this exam to Ready. If the exam administrator has configured notifications, all users get the email indicating the exam is ready and shows up in their list just like before. This same list appears on the exam record as the Groups list and I can easily see the status of users taking the exam. Sample data is provided on the Share Portal just below the update set. If you want to load the sample data, download each of the three XML files starting with sample-exam, then import the XML files into your instance. To do this, click on the lock icon by your name and elevate your access to Security Admin. Go to any list in the system and right-click on the list header, choose Import XML, locate each of the files, and upload them. That's the Exam Manager. If you have questions or comments, feel free to contact me at chuck.tomasi at servicenow.com or leave a comment on the Share Portal. Thank you very much for watching this video.